Putting freedom at the forefront of its ambitious manifesto, Guild Wars 2 arrives onto the scene, threatening to dismantle everything you know about the MMO. It isn't the first would-be WoW killer to challenge the throne, but it certainly is the first to question Blizzard's reign rather than try to imitate it. It's a hefty gauntlet to throw the way of a game that has single-handedly defined online RPGs as we know it. Could Guild Wars 2 be the rallying cry for revolution? Now shut up and enjoy a glimpse of another reality. It's nice to see that you're enthusiastic. Set 250 years after the original, Guild Wars 2 follows the various fantasy races of Tyria in their quest to rid the world of five marauding elder dragons. As it happens, your character has an important role to play in the ongoing conflict, but rather than having the narrative experience stick closely to a set script determined by your racial or class origin, Guild Wars 2 introduces an unexpected element of choice by letting a number of player-made decisions chart the course of your character's journey. You did what? The game makes a big fuss of your so-called personal story, and it definitely comes through as a substantial part of the experience. At the outset, answering a series of trivia questions casts the mold for your avatar's basic motivations and character traits, while decisions made during later stages of the game directly impact how you evolve from there. Instant story missions give you a front row seat to intimate plot points handled through lavishly voiced cutscenes whose prodigious quantity and earnest delivery oftentimes make up for the cheese that occasionally manages to slip in. At any rate, it's easy to appreciate what the game is reaching for with its elevated take on the text box. You're likely to be interested in more than just what awaits at the quest reward screen. And with a number of interestingly wrought paths to explore, there's plenty to draw players back in for another stab at destiny. Now you've angered them. They were already angry. Retreat is not an option. Admirable as it is, Guild Wars 2's stab at storytelling merely sets the tone for the game's grander aspirations. Built on the belief that things could be better, the game brazenly kicks sand in the face of long-held conventions, turning up several progressive new models for the genre that invite exciting possibilities for change. Come on, it won't hurt anything to go look around a bit. However, you wouldn't know it, at least at first, with a brief glance at the game's classes. With familiar fantasy archetypes like the warrior, ranger, and thief, their names will roll off the tongues of the most savvy MMO veterans. What sets them apart has less to do with what they are than what they're capable of. That is to say, a little bit of everything at any given time. Guild Wars 2's controversial spin on the classic tank, healer, and damage dealer trinity would have you believe that it shouldn't exist at all, rejecting established notions of party roles and prescribed playstyles. Specking out the talent tree-like traits informs the ability to heal or hit harder when needed, but the responsibility to do so is shared and not segregated. With an overlying focus on individual performance and self-sufficiency, Guild Wars 2's group dynamic accentuates the benefits of synergy over codependency. The old raid adage of bringing the player, not the class, seems appropriate here. Face me at another core. Dungeons, starting at level 30, are frenetic, flighty affairs that put the game's radical methodology to the test. Pulls and pack compositions are dangerous enigmas to decipher, quick to punish lax reflexes and bad habits with a swift kick to the rear. Even in these infant stages, it seems that the community's picked up on the PvE game's bristling pace. There's a higher demand for crowd control effects, cross-class combos, and kiting than any particular class or spec. It's still too early to say if Guild Wars 2 is completely successful at its master plan. The currently high mortality rate of parties could just as easily reflect balance issues as an inexperienced player base. But if the murmurs on the global chat channel are anything to go by, players are at the very least embracing the game's ambitions in spirit. Casting calls for groups usually mention the number of open spots rather than specific classes. Don't chat with her, Air. Dispatch her! Guild Wars 2's success in improving the overarching MMO progression model, however, is much less ambiguous. By and large, the game provides one of the most satisfying solo experiences in an online RPG to date, liberating players from the hamster wheel of quest lines and instance grinds for something that feels rewarding no matter what you choose to do. 
renowned hearts scattered across the map are the closest the game comes to conventional quest hubs, but instead of having you slog through a sequential string of tasks, these sectioned off zones let you choose freely from a list of objectives. Moreover, dynamic events that rally all nearby players into spontaneous groups award massive experience bonuses for those inclined to take notice. These handy reworkings of the traditional questing model put a great deal of choice back in the player's court. And you two idiots have been toying with it? <clears throat> Three idiots. But the real beauty is that the game rewards you for almost anything you do. Gathering resources, touring cities, and even a spot of crafting begets succulent morsels of experience that make the levels fly by. Earning XP by completing fanciful side objectives, such as skill challenges, vistas, and points of interest, encourages a well-rounded experience that also happens to take the pressure away from staying on the critical path. PvP, in both its cross-server and battleground-based flavors, offers a similar approach with XP pots alongside its other payouts. More than anything, it's clear that the game has exploration in mind when it comes to engaging the world and its bounty of thoughtfully applied content. You needn't look further than the glut of hidden platforming puzzles for proof of this inspired world building. If you quit now, you'll both be disappointed. Still, there are a few aspects that cast certifiable doubt, namely in the game's dubious lack of an endgame outside of tackling explorable mode dungeons and collecting aesthetic prestige gear. While the player versus player game is suitably equipped for a sustainable experience, PvE heads will find themselves left in the dark. The limited character space outside of purchasing more slots from the cash shop is disappointing as well. That was unsettling. Guild Wars 2's unmaking of the tried and true reverberates in its stripped-down take on combat, which focuses heavily on action and adaptability. The curious addition of dodge rolls highlights the importance of mobility and damage mitigation no matter what profession you choose. The game takes it further by highlighting skill management and battlefield awareness in lieu of abstract resources and numbers and bars going up and down on your screen. Skills are tied to each class's available weapon types. Staves bring a loadout of area of effect abilities, for instance, while daggers and swords primarily push for close quarters, single target damage. With these weapon skills only occupying five slots on your bar, it can all seem overly simplistic at first. But with the ability to switch to a secondary weapon set, as well as furnish a complementary set of utility skills, Guild Wars 2's combat game quickly reveals its depth. So-called optimal specs are a secondary concern. It's more about being perfectly in tune with your particular playstyle. It's an intriguing setup that bears a bit of resemblance with Terra's cartwheel happy pace, though the element of liquid party compositions adds another stratum of thought to the mix. Fights feel like continual exercises in survival and efficiency, and there's rarely a moment where you feel like you could take a breather, especially in a protracted boss battle. Compared to the stationary nature of most other MMOs, Guild Wars 2's highly mobile encounters are refreshing in comparison. That's the spirit that'll win this war. Decked in painterly hues, breathtaking vistas, and a soft, decorated look that stands apart from the more aggressive art styles of today, Guild Wars 2 impresses the senses with a unique take on high fantasy. The game proudly puts its art front and center with the reoccurring brushstroke motif serving as a visual anchor to the game's intimate ties with its concept art. Character models are handsomely sculpted with a range of expressive animations, and there's apparently no shortage of beautifully ornamented clothing and armor, seemingly spilling out of monsters by the truckload. A riveting soundtrack scored by Elder Scrolls scribe Jeremy Sewell adds the final coat of varnish, sweeping players up with its fluted crescendos and heroic battle hymns. Your spirit is strong. Do not underestimate yourself. For all its rampant innovations, Guild Wars 2 is most successful at proving that there is always another way. The level of imagination, inspiration, and variety on display sets a high standard for other games to come. And with a payment model a good deal more generous than the majority of its competition, it puts to question just what other developers can get away with. While it's difficult to say if we'll look back on Guild Wars 2 as the game that finally did World of Warcraft in, we'd be surprised if the future of MMOs doesn't look a bit more like this. The process has already started. You can't stop progress. 